right, we are streaming live. So hello, hello, ladies. Hi. Hi, Hi Ash. So yes, welcome back, everybody, to another um, webinar of the Lady Leaders series. And for people who've been kind of tuning in consistently, we're working through, you know, during this kind of post-pandemic, or I don't know where we quite are in the <laughs> pandemic, but how to really start to hire differently, onboard differently, um, and potentially even hiring people who don't have dental experience. So we've worked through hiring differently, different ads, mm -hmm. a different approach, as we've discussed. We kind of moved through how to utilize a universal trainer to really set the bedrock foundation of every team member, whether it be a doctor, you know, um, a hygiene tech, um, it doesn't matter. Really setting the bedrock foundation for every single team member on all the basic HR, you know, universal concepts, universal software things per position. So we kind of moved into that. And then today, what we're going to discuss is I think a topic that is tough for a lot of doctors just due to the lack of preparation um, in dental school. And that's onboarding um, a scheduling coordinator who even potentially may not have dental experience. And I think, Ash, we can say that's happening more now than potentially ever before is hiring yeah. with no experience. Um, so with me to help out, which I needed these ladies expertise uh, myself is um, Debbie Dotson, who a lot of people know is um, the practice director. <laughs> and she's been on a couple webinars as well. And then we have our amazing Delcy, who as everybody knows, Delcy is actually, um, she is our, we like to call her our scheduling ninja. And she is legit a ninja. I'm so excited to have her here. Um, so I'll let you guys introduce yourselves a little bit more though. All right, I am Debbie. I have been with Dr. Casmel since 2014 and I'm still here. We are plugging right along and um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and I'm Delcy, as they call me, the ninja scheduler. Um, <laughs> I've been with Dr. Casmel for about four years now, since 2018, and I couldn't be happier. Um, this is the place for me. Yeah, yeah. we're so excited, actually. <laughs> I'm like, it's us that are like, we're so glad that we're the place for you. So um, truly, what, what I really wanted to emphasize is Delcy came with pretty much no dental experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and Debbie actually was the person who helped to really train her to become a true scheduling ninja. And so what my thought process was is, is it possible to take somebody with no dental experience, um, you know, no real knowledge of dental terminology, nothing like that at all, mm -hmm. and have them relatively quickly become something more than the person who answers the phone and fills holes? Um, because I think our entire office you know, the entire organization has just incredible respect for what Delcy um, does and how she now trains other scheduling coordinators um, because she really has learned how to schedule efficiency, you know, schedule to efficiency and schedule really um, highly productive days. And she's mastered kind of that art. Um, and so I wanted to dig into um, more of that, how it was done and give doctors hope that you can hire somebody without um, dental knowledge and get the same result. Cause a lot of times people always say like, Oh, if only I had a Debbie or if only I had a Delcy and I'm like, well, you can too. Oh, you can, <laughs> you just have to be intentional about it. So, so yeah. So after universal training, I'm going to kind of give a brief synopsis. You know, we really are going to want to discuss, um, you know, after you've hired, um, this person, how do we set up a training plan for this person so that they can excel through 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days? Um, it's really important, doctors, that, you know, and there's resources now all over the place of creating a training plan. Um, and Ashley, I'm not certain quite, you know, if Front Office Academy has some of those, but I know within DSN there's some resources as well. But creating those 30, 60, 90 day documents of what we're wanting these coordinators um, to really do is, is exceptionally important to get into their hands as soon as possible. Say so they know kind of where they're going. They know how to navigate through the training plan. Um, and then, you know, it's really important, I think, setting the bar, the benchmarks of expectations for these people as soon as possible and as clearly as possible. And I know we keep saying the same things, Ashley. I think literally onboarding um, and expectations, I feel like are words we just nonstop say. But 
it's so true. And I think the three of us can attest when we fail to do that or do it really stringently, we've been perhaps maybe disappointed and, and maybe more so even in our own selves than anything, um, because it's so much harder um, and costlier to wait until day 60 to tell somebody what we should have told them at day 15. Mm -hmm. So um, as you guys are kind of starting this process of really setting up this training plan, don't forget to be incredibly clear about what the expectations are, what the benchmarks are, what the non-negotiables are, and make those clear from the very get-go. Mm -hmm. um, would yes. we not agree? Yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and don't apologize for those standards. Yeah. I think so often we Oh, we want to shrink back and feel bad for having those standards, but, um, and we're all inclined to do that, but just don't yeah. <laughs> do it. Well, and to, that, to that point too, I mean, like the, yeah, don't, don't feel bad for setting your standards, but also like people do well with information. And this is another thing, you know, we repeat, like people want to know what their job is, you yes. know, it's, right. it's kind of frustrating to show up to a position and they're like, oh, just kind of jump in and do it. And like, and some people can do that and some people can thrive there, but I think you will have a better outcome. Not, I think we know, right. You will have a better outcome <laughs> mm -hmm. if you have a system in place and you can, you can onboard those people, you know, with a plan and they feel like they know where they're headed as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely. So, so yeah, so let's kind of dig in. So I'll start with you, Debbie. Um, since she was our main trainer for a really long time, she's passed the reins on to a few <laughs> more people. But, you know, when we start with, say, the first day after universal training, mm -hmm. you know exactly what they've been trained on universally. Where do we start? What days do we start on? How do you start with structuring that? Deb? So I am going to either pick a day where um, there's less traffic, less phone calls, less people coming in and out. Or I'm going to pick a day like a Friday, Friday afternoon, where there's no one in the office. And, and maybe I want it to be a two to three hour block of time because we are giving them so much information. Um, they have no clue about anything dental related. So I'm going to choose a quiet time. Um, we all know what it's like to try to do our job and mm -hmm. try to train as patients are coming in, treatment plans are, we've all done it. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and I was in that situation and I kept thinking, gosh, if we just had no interruptions. <laughs> and so plan that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, like I said, a day where it's slower or a day where nobody is in the office. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I am going to start with is the schedule. Um, I want them to become very familiar with um, each hygienist. This is her column. Here's another hygiene column. This column is doctor. And then we're going to start really primarily focusing on the hygiene schedule. That's what we're going to start the scheduling coordinator with. Mm -hmm. And um, lay out that schedule of the different types of appointments, new patient appointment, recall appointment with no x-rays, recall appointment with x-rays, because you're going to be using those same codes over and over again. Mm -hmm. And usually the time frame is set for new patients in our office. It's 90 minutes, an hour for adult recall. And really honing in on those appointments, the hygienist, the codes, diagnostic and preventive, and how that relates to insurance. And also kind of enters, adding to that, the dental terminology, the frequencies and limitations, mm -hmm. specifically for that. It's awful to be checking in and you've got this jumble schedule in front of you that you have no idea what it means. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would start. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't want to, I don't want to start past this because I've, I've literally had this exact kind of conversation with so many doctors who are like, well, they don't, you know, I don't have team members who will want to come in on a Friday or I don't, you know, I don't think people are going to want to do that. Well, you know, I, I literally just got done saying it. Actually, we had a, a department head meeting and I was like, I do feel like on board to your freedom, ladies. Like, <laughs> that's my little mantra, like on board to freedom. <laughs> I was like, I feel like Braveheart. <laughs> I love it. 
that's that's the battle cry right that is one like, well, that's where i was like you know and now luckily i didn't have to talk people into it but i know that there's doctors who are like oh they're not going to want to do that i'm like i don't think you're understanding though that they should want to do this yeah. because it really is their freedom um you know if they're drowning up front which hopefully by the way we're hiring and onboarding prior to getting totally overwhelmed up front but sometimes you can't sure. you know they're going to want to I would hope be part of um, onboarding that person during a quiet time when they can really spend that sense of intentionality. So it is so well worth the time and extra money to really spend that dedicated time because, and I think Deb already said it, but like you really are gonna get the product out that you spent the time putting into in the first place. Um, and where it can go really wrong is sometimes, Deb, Delcy, you can attest, I think, we throw these people in, Ash, like you said, we're kind of crazy frantic up there. Right. They're trying to help. They can sometimes make more of a mess that then your front office people are having to clean up because they don't know how to help. Everyone's stressed out. And then I have found, and tell me, Ash, if you've seen this too, but people actually start getting grumpy at the brand new hire mm -hmm. and they're mad at them. Mm -hmm. They're Absolutely. mad. That they've been and i'm like oh no isn't this like the worst case scenario or is it just me <laughs> so you know you spend all this time hiring them and then you you actually inadvertently create this sense of animosity so it's, it just becomes a really unsafe environment for them to continue to learn so i don't want to let go that that whole you know topic of really making sure to be intentional and and dedicate that first chunk of time to give it a good experience like right out of the gate when you're onboarding. Mm -hmm. um, and you really have, I have to switch my um, mindset because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I've got so much to do. I need to do this. I need to do this. But as I reshape those thoughts, I kind of have a new job description for me. And it's, uh, it's my time that I need to invest for that person to succeed. Mm, so good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and to that, you know, it, it, it goes, it's, it kind of all goes back. I, I, I preach about this with regards to delegation to in general, right? Like you're like, Oh, it's just faster if I do it myself. Well, yeah. In this exact moment, but like, you know, it's, it's about the little, the, that time investment that you're going to put. So you have that freedom, you know, that yeah. onboarding to freedom. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm hoping it catches on. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it needs to be office wide too, because no matter what team member you bring on, whether it be scheduling coordinator, it always seems to disrupt the natural flow and the systems that you've got going on. And so it, it, it takes the whole team giving grace and, you know, teaching when they need to. Yeah. So I've seen kind of assistants get mad at front office and, and vice versa. It needs to be the whole team. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, so yeah, so, you know, on that first day of the training plan after um, universal training, you spend a dedicated, you know, four hour chunk of time mm -hmm. going through primarily the hygiene schedule, reading yes. it, understanding it, basic terminology wrapped around it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you kind of touched base on Debbie you're wrapping in a little bit of dental terminology. Debbie did create kind of a dental terminology type kind of packet too, to really be able to teach like basic teeth things, basic restorations, you know, which is really helpful. Those are actually, you can find those if you Google it, you can kind of peruse through DSN, but, you know, we created one kind of specific for us, but, you know, it is a kind of a helpful dental terminology thing. Were you going to speak to that, Ash? Yeah, and that's exactly what we were touching on earlier with regards to that's that's a big part of why we created Front Office Academy. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, if you're listening to this and you're a mastermind member, you guys get Front Office Academy. Um, if you're DSN members, you guys get a screaming discount on, on Front Office Academy. So, but we have Dentistry 101 is the yep. course inside of there. And it's tooth numbers and it's terminology and it's little basic things, especially for scheduling coordinator, I think super important. You know, you yeah. have to know kind of what you're talking about and yeah. it can make someone with, you know, that no experience, just, you know, give them a leg up and again, save you time. Yeah. Um, that's a big chunk of time you don't have to train on. So I'll let you kind of post potential, you know, yeah. stuff in the, in the notes for that as yeah. well, because that's a huge thing. I think for Debbie had already kind of had her hand in that for over the years. So, but I think that's a great document to be able to weave into that hygiene training, some of that dental terminology that's 
um, corresponding to those hygiene appointments, the codes, you weave in a little bit of insurance stuff. And I know doctors mm-hmm. sometimes are like, oh, that's like kryptonite, super scary. I don't even know what to do. Thankfully, there's resources with Front Office Academy as well. But this is where I think, Debbie, you start weaving in some of the insurance nuances mm-hmm. within that hygiene scheduling training as well. Mm-hmm. So frequencies and limitations is a big one for um, preventive and diagnostic. Knowing the amount of coverage in general, you know, um, that insurance companies have, um, knowing what companies, your offices and network is a big thing and knowing those plans that were out of network and teaching them how to explain that to patients and what that means to patients. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and I would say during this training session, you would want to have built in um, tests or I I I just think a lot of times we spend our time speaking to them and it's, I mean, literally it is just so much information. They need to be able to translate that information into some kind of testing, whether it's, you know, practice this schedule or scheduling this type of patient. So you need to have give and take there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So you interweave some of the insurance stuff, a little bit of the verbiage, a little bit of how to discuss it. Mm -hmm. So I know obviously the answer is to this, but this is kind of what you're focused on the first 30 days. Yes. Yes. So we're not necessarily focused on throwing everything, you know, when it comes to like treatment coordinating and things like that. Now, sometimes you have to interweave that and we understand that, but We spend quite a bit of time on just schedule, scheduling efficiently, codes, terminology, dental terminology in that first 30 days. Yes. Um, And then we do spend some time with phone calls Mm -hmm. and insurance um, understanding as well. Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, And so, Ash, anything to add in there before I... Um, same type of thing again for an office academy is a great resource for um, with regards to just general phone skills, general, you know, um, th- there's just a ton of resources on there. Um, even, you know, get a chance to check it out. This is, I'm not going to make this an FOA commercial, but sure. <laughs> well, but it is such a, it is such a helpful resource because a lot of times too, I hear people who are like, well, I don't have Debbie or Delcy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, like- I have to put together that training. No, you don't. DSN yeah. has so many resources. I know, I know. <laughs> You're like, that's your mantra. <laughs> like the resources. Yeah, but it's true. So some people listening right now are like, well, if I don't have this, what do I do? There is yeah. resources available. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tell doctors, you know, especially in smaller offices, you know, if you don't have somebody who's a great culture fit, who's already doing the job really well, don't have that person be the one training, even if they come in on Friday, if they're not already getting excellent results, you know, you don't want them training. So doctors, I hate to say it, sometimes it may be you. And in the beginning, it was me. (laughs) I was coming in on my off time. I was sitting with people and showing them, you know, the expectations and things like that. Um, And I've even sat with Debbie a long time ago um, and really sat with her up at the front office and watched how everything worked. Because sometimes, you know, doctors, we have to get our hands dirty to really understand what's happening. We've got to know. And so, um, and I know time is always a challenge, but I think that sometimes doctors, if you don't have that person, get the resources that we've now said (laughs) are available (laughs) and plan on potentially you being the person to come in and help. Um, And so, you know, at some point, guys, you know, during that first 30 days, we are kind of discussing phone training skills. Yes. But... The one thing that always makes, I know you guys can attest, (laughs) like makes the the heckles on the back of my neck go up is like when people get thrown in Mm -hmm. and are like, hey, just answer the phone. Yeah. Just say like, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Like, you know, I remember when Delcy came in, I'm like, Delcy, do you get who you are in this position? Like you're the gatekeeper of everything. You're the concierge of the practice. You're like, you're a big deal. So in order to be a big deal and really be this amazing customer service experience, we can't throw you directly to the phone. (laughs) We're going to have to spend the time. So tell me when it comes to phone skills, what are we, how are we kind of training now team members on that? So when I first started, I will say Debbie, um, 
she practiced a lot with me. She would sit down in the kitchen and just go over phone calls and have me doing, doing them over and over and over. And I think that is a very important part of a scheduling coordinator. You want to be was she doing like, 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 uh, like back and forth with you or was she like recording calls and going through how to do them better with you? So we were going back and forth. She, um, she would show me how she would like them and, and want it. those calls. And then I would just kind of shine in and, and do my part. Um, she would give me feedback. We try it again until it was <laughs> perfect and how she wanted them. Mm -hmm. And I think till this day, that's how it works. We role play. We have a scorecard that, you know, we kind of score each other on and um, we just do it back and forth until we see where that person is doing it how we want it. Um, because as I said, it's a really important part of a scheduling coordinator. We want to be professional. Uh, we want to always make sure that our tone of voice is um, how we want it. Uh, and then always finding solutions if a patient calls and says, you know, I can't make this time, but there's an opening later in the day, like offering that opening, can we keep them on the same day? And rather than moving them to a different day, keeping them on the same day, but at a later time. Yeah. So, I mean, I think too, it's like, you know, it's so hard because we want to put them in the role immediately. And I mm -hmm. get that, yeah. but mm -hmm. I do find that the mess to clean up sometimes is so the fallout of doing that can be really significant and more than anything deflating to the person in that position because they're ill prepared. Mm -hmm. So they naturally are getting poor feedback from the patients, which makes them get a little more um, uncomfortable wanting to answer the phone. Whereas I think spending the time to practice over and over and over using something like, you know, the scorecards to really do a great job saying, you know, do we have everything on check before you actually make the calls? And I think, you know, I think you guys have definitely, we are a big fan of recording each other for everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we love using recordings and saying, what do you think about it? You know, and we do that as doctors, we do that for our hygiene exams. We just do a lot of that, but, um, you know, I think that being able to have them rate themselves is a really good indicator of, mm -hmm how did they feel during the call? Because one thing we have found is sometimes they would rate themselves as like, I crushed that. And we're like, oh, <laughs> no. that was me when wow. I I crushed everything. And then I noticed, no, I'm not crushing everything. <laughs> I need to work harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think really practicing phone skills before that person yeah. ever picks up the phone is better for the business. It's better for the patient, but it's better for that team member, mm -hmm. I think, too. Um, sure. I think it makes them feel so much more confident. Um, and one of the easiest ways, and I know that they start with, is really just confirmation calls, um, correct? Yes, I think that's correct. one of the, yeah. yeah so so yeah. as a scheduling coordinator, confirmations are, you know, up here. So um, that's what we always start with. Confirmations is a big part of keeping our schedule together. So um, we do start with making sure, you know, we have scripts in line um, to make sure that that framework is in place. So we do have uh, scripts typed out um, and every individual says it the same. We don't, one individual doesn't say it different than the other. We all sound the same. Um, we know how it all works. We know our fi first reach out, our final reach out. Um, we, we also even have a text template um, and that text template is for confirmations as well. So we have all those typed up. We know exactly you know, whoever's doing confirmations, what to say. And we try not to sound like robots, to be honest. Um, we always want to ensure that our patients know that we value their time and we try to keep things short and simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really big point is that now that we're moving into more and more virtual things, um, it used to be all we trained on was phone skills. Mm -hmm. Well, now... Um, and I just got done talking to my admin team actually about this too, is like, I think so much etiquette has to be in virtual skills now too. So really training up on text and yeah. email etiquette. Or yeah. I, <laughs> I may have just made up a word. Take a word. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go with it. Yeah, it's a really big deal. And that's something, you know, I know for Delcy, 
Mm -hmm. um she was like I was not the spelling bee champ she was like (laughs) no (laughs) so she she honestly all on her own because you know once we're like oh hey Dells did you see this Mm -hmm. she started spell checking everything Mm -hmm. so she made sure that anything she sent out she spell checked um Mm -hmm. and I think that really training up our team we've got to remember phone skills matter but so does all forms of you know, correspondence with patients yeah. um, and with the team, because things can be so easily misconstrued um, in the tone of things. You are so, speaking my love language here. Like, oh my God. I'm yeah. I'm about this all day long. Um, you have to, you have to think about the, the mood that whoever is reading it in, mm-hmm. that's how they will interpret, not the mood that you wrote it in. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. That happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. And I think we can all say, you know, a lot of times people are firing stuff up, stuff up quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're not thinking about that. And then they'll get a response back and it's like, whoa, holy <laughs> yeah. smokes. No, no, you know. So okay. I think really being able, and I think the more we're progressing into kind of the virtual world of online everything. I think that's such a valuable, huge part of what we're now training on. And yes, we have scripts and we have templates so that, you know, the human error factor can't come in quite as much, but, um, but it still can come in because, you know, it is real people still typing things in and things like that. So I think that's an important part that Delcy and our other trainers really train on is Mm -hmm. the etiquacy of, I think that's a word. I don't know. (laughs) I'm having a moment. Yeah. But, um, English is hard right now, but Um, on that note though, too, um, there is a, um, plugin for Google Chrome and it probably works on other, um, browsers as well. It's called Grammarly. Um, and it will a texture spelling your grammar, and it will also tell you the tone that your email sounds in. So happy face on the bottom. There'll be like a grumpy face. Like, do you know that this sounds like you're a bleep right now right like, so you know that's a really great tip yeah that is a great it is I think it's like five dollars or something like that but you know it's it's something that our team uses a lot <laughs> one mad patient is is worth five dollars absolutely <laughs> yeah well and it's embarrassing for the team member that's sure. the other thing is once again I think of it from both sides of like we want to try to set them up for as much success I think as possible mm-hmm. um so okay so really in that 30-day training plan we've kind of reviewed the basics and you know sometimes I've been asked like well do they train on just all of that in that four hours no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's a lot of information to take in. <laughs> yeah, and it's subsequent. Yeah, right. and oftentimes we'll structure our training to where the new team member will have shorter days um, and go home and work on, you know, work on things and then come back the next day. We'll recap what we did that, you know, the previous day and then continue to build. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Even past the 36, you know, the 30 days, we're adding more things in for the 60 and um, yeah. Yeah. And then they really are on that training plan. They sit with them at 30 days. I mean, they're with them every single week with dedicated time. That's quieter time. And they're checking in to see you know, week one, week two, week three, week four, at the end of 30 days, are we on track for checking things off? And that's what I was saying. It's like really making sure, hey, new team member, I love you enough to say, I can't move you on until we've got this figured out. So we've got two weeks to really catch you up. So let's, let's dive deep. And what do we need to do to get you up to speed? And is it, I need to give an extra two hours on it? What do I need to do? But not moving them much, you know, don't continue to build on a a shaky foundation, I think is really important. So, you know, then as they're moving into the 60 day training plan, then they're starting to really discuss with them more, I think, training to actual goals. And that's something that I think works really well for most um, scheduling coordinators is to understand what are they shooting for? Because if you give them nothing to aim for, you are going to get the days that they they give you. And it's not because they're trying to, yeah, they're not trying to be, you know, stinkers about it. Because I hear that all the time. My favorite phrase is like, well, they just made me work through lunch They made me do this. And I'm like, your, your cute little itty bitty scheduling coordinator made you do that? <laughs> yeah, I know that's my favorite. They, they put, they did that. I'm like, oh, no. Wow. I'm like, they have got some power over you. <laughs> so, so let's talk about Dulce, you know, kind of mm-hmm. diving into that. Like Dulce really is, I can't stress enough. She is phenomenal. We have like the funny thing that we say about her is like, <laughs> there's like a Liam Neeson or whatever his name is from that movie Taken. That's like, 
What is that? Get that. What does it say? Uh, I have a specific I set of skills. You and schedule oh. you. Yeah. And, okay. and that's, yeah, that's really me. I will find you and schedule you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, as Dr. Kazma was saying, scheduling doctors or, or hygienists to go is a, a must. Um, for me, at first, it was a struggle. I think it was it was a struggle knowing um, what am I supposed to schedule the hygienist to? And, and I started learning that. Um, but, you know, that is a really big piece of, of scheduling um, to go. Um, I have been actually trying to schedule more high productive appointments than low production appointments. So that's very important. Always start with um, higher, trying to schedule high production appointments rather than just low production appointments. So for example, let's say there's a 80 minute, 90 minute opening on the schedule. Um, are you gonna try to just put in a, a regular profi in there or are you just gonna, are you gonna try to schedule a new patient? Um, SRP, something that's higher production and it's gonna schedule or make the hygienist schedule to go. Um, I found it super helpful to also look ahead in the schedule when anything, if there's broken appointments, start with the ASAP list, which I, I'm sure we all have a priority list and unscheduled list, but I've also found it super helpful to look ahead in the schedule and move patients up. Um, that's always, you know, that's super helpful for me. Um, I do set very high goals when it comes to, um, we have like weekly meetings or, um, yeah, so we have weekly meetings and we have a goal. I set those goals very high to make sure that I push myself to do better and um, actually try to hit the, any reactivation goals higher. So if I make my goal um, reactivate 20 patients, I'm really gonna try to reactivate 50 patients. Um, I do also like to look back at treatment trackers and try to schedule SRP appointments. I know it's very important to get those patients in and not make them wait. So that's always, you know, super helpful to look at treatment trackers and, and try to, you know, get those patients in. But really getting um, that hygienist to go for me is a must. Um, I think if the schedule does fall apart, that's my job. I will work on the schedule. I will drop any everything else and start working on that schedule. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, what's funny is like, I was thinking about this. I was like, so much of what she says, we're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but like, it really is something that is a tough thing mm -hmm. sometimes for doctors to really train on and enforce. And like, the first thing being is like, she knew what goals she had per hygienist. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it is, you know, I know for some doctors are like, well, I don't have any goals for the hygienist. Well, perhaps mm -hmm. you can come up with something for them to aim towards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other thing is, is Delcy's really good about when she's looking at, she does both hygiene and doctors, but we're going to start with, you know, hygiene schedule. You know, she's really good about, she knows how much, you know, per hygienist we're kind of looking to aim towards. Mm -hmm. And building in blocks that say, okay, you know, I know that per month I'm going to need this many quads of SRP. We tend to get about this many new patients. If you're looking to grow your new patient numbers, you can always add 10% to that number. Mm -hmm. um, go back and look at your last six months, last year of SRPs and build blocks into the hygiene schedules as such so that she kind of is building a template of perfect days and filling accordingly. Um, mm -hmm. If all they're doing, like she said, is throwing in profies constantly, often that hygienist is tired, <laughs> um, yes. you know, um, and we're really just not serving the perio, you know, patients as easily right. and it's tough to find how to, you know, get the new patients in. So mm -hmm. they are really good, the scheduling coordinators of creating that block scheduling. The other thing that they do that if it's helpful for doctors for their scheduling, you know, scheduling coordinators is they will put in how much that day is short. Yes. So within that hygienist, if that, if the goal is 2000 mm -hmm. and something fell off, they're like, Hey guys, you know, ideally we want to put something in that's about this high value amount. So that way any scheduling coordinator can actually be able to plug the right thing in versus mm -hmm. just filling the hole. Mm -hmm. So with some intentionality docs, you know, you really can 
help create true scheduling ninjas that are creating efficient schedules, but actually productive schedules. Because as a doctor and team, I think the worst thing is when we throw them in without giving them guidelines, we can end up with a really crazy day that produced nothing mm -hmm. or feel like it produced nothing. And then we're all frustrated. And the doctors are frustrated and exhausted. The hygienists are frustrated and exhausted. And that scheduling coordinator is bummed to see everybody frustrated and exhausted. So I do think that there was so much wisdom in just what she said of, she knows exactly when something falls off, <laughs> it ultimately falls on her. By the way, if everybody's responsible for filling the schedule, nobody's going to fill the schedule. <laughs> so she knows when the buck stops, it stops with me. So if this happens, I, I alert everybody, I'm dropping everything and I'm going to work on this. And, and they know that, you know, um, and she knows exactly what to put in to get that schedule back to goal. And I think ensuring that level of expectation with your scheduling coordinators is never more pertinent than right now because schedules are so changing. I'm hearing it over and over, mm -hmm. you know, with the new kind of resurgent of, you know, Omicron and things like that, um, summertime happening, holds mm -hmm. keep happening. So if you yeah. don't have a plan, you don't have a purpose and you're not going into that day intentional about what to do. I hear mm -hmm. doctors who are like, oh, everything's going unfilled, but I'm booked out for 17 months. I'm like, <laughs> well, if you're booked out for 17 months, then call the people who are at month 12, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's like Dulcy was saying is I think we can all attest that a lot of patients are having to be pushed out. So really setting that intention with scheduling coordinators as you're onboarding them, that your job is more than just filling the holes. It's being smart and training to do that, I think. Right. So Ash, Deb, it, anybody? Yeah. There's so many pieces to the puzzle when it comes to scheduling coordinators, it's a lot more than just filling this schedule or the whole, it's really making sure you become a strategic. Um, is that even a word? A strategic. <laughs> yeah. So um, with that being said, what I like to look at too is, um, you know, is a, a family member due on that same day, just looking at the schedule and knowing that schedule inside and out. So if there's family members that are due and there's openings, we're going to try to schedule them on that same day or with like treatment um, appointments too if they're coming in for a comprehensive fmx and they need a cleaning and there's an opening we're going to try to scoot them over and get them scheduled on that same day so you really have to learn the schedule inside and out and and look at it you know um there's so many good ways of filling the schedule with that same person on that same day and it's not letting kind of, that opportunity go. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It's kind of like a 3D picture, right? Like it's not yeah. just the, these blocks here. It's like, well, what if we look at it this way? And like you yeah. said, this person actually needs an FMX or Ooh, this family member, you know, like it's, it's like this spinning thing that you have to like be aware of. That's, yes. that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a really beautiful way of putting it. <laughs> it's not two dimensional. It is yeah. totally three dimensional. And, and that's where like, you know, it's like, oh, well, can't I just throw somebody in who worked at, you know, the Ritz and just throw them in up front? Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> not if you're looking for a true scheduling ninja. Yeah. An ambassador. That's a great like, piece to start. Yeah. yeah. Great piece to start. Yeah. 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 Hopefully they'll have some good customer service skills, which you're right. That is a great place, place to start. But there is so many things within that first 30 days that if you can help them understand that level of impact right from the get-go, and then the benchmarks as you're progressing to be able to get here, it's going to take the doctors, like I said, you kind of setting the tone for how intentional you want them to be. Um, because often when I hear, I got all these holes, nobody's working on it. I'm like, well, why not? <laughs> Why, why is nobody working on it? Does nobody, does nobody understand? Because I, I joke with Delcy, you know, when she started, she had two KPIs and that was get the hygienist um, to goal. And then the second was reactivate whatever it takes to get the hygienist to goal, to fulfill number one. Yeah, that was it. You know, I mean, that, that's really what she was. And so she, she knew in the very beginning, that was really what she was responsible for. And I think just getting focused and intentional with them um, before moving on to kind of some of those bigger things is really important. So knowing the schedule in that first 30 days, understanding that, understanding the impact of really creating, they are kind of the creators of these days, I think for us. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so 
we've kind of moved through what the first 30 kind of 60 days are in our offices. Um, we really have those benchmarks laid out. We don't progress to anything until they've checked off that they can do it in a role playing setting first. Um, so then, you know, as we're moving on, you know, next step wise is kind of that check in position, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've moved them along from hygiene scheduling, understanding reactivation, understanding phone calls, how to text, confirmations, all of that. And we've, we're now kind of moving them into the check in position. Mm -hmm. Okay. Debbie, yes. what would you do there? So um, now that they've really learned the schedule, they're better able to help check in. Um, and, and again, we do the role playing before we actually put them in that position, mm -hmm. um, just with different scenarios and um, just practice it over and over and over again. And um, when they're, when we're pleased with what they've, um, we feel they're capable, then we'll put them in that position. Giving them verbiage, um, like Elsie said, we don't want them to be robots, but we are very um, set on what we want it, want them to say, what we want them to look like, how we want them to stand. We want them to mm -hmm. greet the patient before they greet us. Mm -hmm. um, if they're on the phone and they're busy, we have a scenario of what we want that to look like. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little bit awkward at first for that new team member to, you know, find their name and what is your name, sir? And so a great way that we found is just for them to stand up, introduce themselves. My name is Debbie. I'm new to the team. Sir, can you tell me what your name is and I'll get you checked in. So that's a great segue to get them past yes. that awkward phase. Yeah. Yeah. So role playing even that, you know, versus throwing them in, having it be an awkward interchange, um, you know, having them be able to know what to say. Mm -hmm. And I do think, you know, I used to think like, well, aren't I hiring adults? Aren't they going to know <laughs> kind of like what to wear and, you know, what to say? I yeah. now never think that. <laughs> <laughs> I have been very interestingly surprised by what people <laughs> just think is, is probably a good thing you know, social interaction. So we do train heavily on, you know, we do have them, you know, look a certain way, mm -hmm. you know, for us, we have definitely uniforms for our front office, mm -hmm. um, what they do when they stand up, how they greet them, how it should sound, um, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. And um, the other team members are pretty well trained. And when they hear an interaction that wasn't great, we don't um, say anything, of course, in front of the patients when they're there, but almost immediately they'll say, you know, hey, Debbie, tell me how you felt about that. Ugh, mm -hmm. It felt a little weird. Great. Let's talk about for next time. What do we see that we could do to improve it? The feedback is instantaneous, which we warn everybody the very first day, <laughs> we're going to be doing this. Because <laughs> my goal being, I never want resentment to, to end up occurring. Um, and I want that team member as quickly as possible to have that feedback loop. Um, mm -hmm. So we warn them that it's coming and then we follow through on our word in the most truly um, honest but kind way in the moment. So so we role play and kind of have them start with check-in when they're starting with true face-to-face -face, you know, patient interactions. Then mm -hmm. we move them over to check out, which, mm -hmm. is, which is different for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, elaborate what that looks like. So with checkout, um, I probably would start with hygiene first, although sometimes you can't really pick and choose. Um, and that's pretty easy. Um, usually, and usually it is hygiene because we collect um, for treatment when they check in. So we're going to be teaching them on that as well. And that helps them get them familiar with the treatment side of things. And really checkout is just... Pretty, I'm going to let you. Yeah. So with checkout, um, the insurance kind of goes into place because as Debbie said, she kind of showed them like frequencies. Um, it's really important to know like what you're going to collect from that patient at checkout. So the moment they're checking out, you're prepared for them. You're ready. I like to just go back and look at their insurance and see like, what am I collecting? Most of the time it's only fluoride unless they have a plan that you know, covers x-rays at 80%, which there's plans like that. Um, you know, we just kind of look at insurance, um, 
collect and then make sure that they're scheduled for their next visits and send them out the door. And I do think it's important to set what are the protocols of check out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where don't assume anything. Um, assume that they don't know how to read a ledger, assume that they don't understand how to do all of that and teach them exactly what you're looking for, exactly where you're looking for it, and what exactly is the checkout process. As you heard kind of Delcy say, because it's just what we do in our offices, is obviously, you know, we always collect for fluoride, you know, we always do these certain things, we always check here, and then we always ensure that the next appointment is scheduled, mm -hmm. if at all possible, mm -hmm. um, including any family members that are due around the same time. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important too, to ensure that along the steps, they know check out is more than just, you know, a button or saying goodbye, yeah. you know, it's like, here's exactly all the steps that are involved in checkout. Cause checkout is quite a bit more involved than say check in. Mm -hmm. So I think really giving them that consistent framework to use every single time, once again, not training robots, but they need to know exactly where to look and exactly what to look for. What's the expectation every time in these positions? Because we've all seen where, you know, without that, sometimes AR ends up growing tremendously because whoopsie, we didn't collect on those 17, $25, 28, $40 fluorides or whatever. Yeah. We also missed the opportunity to get so many people scheduled when they were right there in the office. So I think that, you know, when you're, when you're bringing in that scheduling coordinator, you're starting, you know, with whether you do universal training or not, whatever you're starting on day one, you have to recognize that each step of the way has to really build upon the last step. Don't move on until that first, you know, level is really solid. Um, don't throw them in if possible to a scenario where they're going to likely fail. Mm -hmm. um, set them up for success as much as possible with them understanding that things are gonna happen. We can't prepare for every scenario, but I'm here to support you. I'm here to help kind of through it all. Um, and so I'm thinking, you know, that's really for us, the main basics of the scheduling coordinator. That's kind of the plan we follow. Um, if you're utilizing them for a TC component, we can't fully dive into that because that's a whole other. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, for me, I think hiring somebody for just a TC position is, is a tough, is a tough one. Um, that's hard to hire a TC with no experience when you haven't put them through the SC portion. So I know in our offices, we're pretty big on TCs have to know the SC portion. Mm -hmm. They don't just to, you know, just move to just a TC without knowing the rest of it. They have to know all the rest mm -hmm. um, because every position is so. It seems like a, you know, a good transition to like a good progression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is become, it becomes, you know, for our front office tiers, it becomes something that they get to strive towards, mm -hmm. but some people don't have the personality or the desire to do it, you know, and I won't go into that, but, you know, we don't want to throw somebody into a TC position that is not meant to, to do oh. that. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's really how we structure the SC portion. I'm trying to think if there's anything we left out, how we build on the 30, 60, 90 days, the resources of the front office academy, mm -hmm. um, phone, um, phone skills, text skills, email skills, anything that we left out that you do, guys do you do scripts and do you do verbiage on how to, on how to collect payment? We do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I feel like, like if you like, if you, you know, say you're, maybe you're snatching someone from like a coffee shop or even like Ritz Carlton, like people go in and they like know what they're going to pay. Like, I know this is a 597 coffee, but you know, a lot of times, like, I don't necessarily know what my insurance pays on things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so sometimes I think that can change the dynamic, like, you know, of, of having to ask for, for payment essentially. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a skill that is important to remember and not assume that everyone has as well. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter the dollar amount. No. Um, like there's people who are uncomfortable asking for any amount of right. money. Yeah. Right. So you're right. When it moves to that checkout, you know, position, it is important that somebody is fully trained up and understanding that we're, you know, what we're collecting, why we're collecting it, mm -hmm. you know, why it's important. Um, and the other thing too, is really linking, you know, the impact of doing that to the long-term, you know, consequences of not doing it. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is sometimes people aren't even aware of what their action and what the consequence linked to it is. Sure. So 
they just think like, oopsie, I forgot. Well, that's okay. The magical, you know, Allison, the insurance coordinator, <laughs> well, she'll find it, you know, or you know what, we'll get it later. Mm-hmm. Well, we all know we don't want to get it six months later. You know, mm-hmm. we don't want to do that. And here's why. So I think that that's a really good point is really training them. And yes, we have scripts for pretty much everything. Um, and I think, you know, it is a fine balance because you want people to be people, sure. but when you don't know dentistry, you don't know anything. I personally feel like give them the security blanket of knowing exactly what to say, exactly what to do, Mm -hmm. and then let them put their flavor on it. Um, That being said, while having it, having people listen to what that flavor is. (laughs) (laughs) Flavor zone. We don't want to go outside the flavor zone. Correct. (laughs) Correct. Correct. That's why, what is it? Baskin Robbins only has like so many flavors. We're like, this is the zone. Once you start going to like the chia seed, pistachio, whatever, it's like, we're going to, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. (laughs) So, and what we've done in the past too, as they move to the checkout um, station, we do also like to sit down with them and prepare them before the patient comes out. So let's sit down, let's look at this ledger together. What do you see? Is there a balance? Um, What are we gonna collect today? So we sit with them, we help them through the process of knowing exactly what to collect before the patient walks up. We wanna make sure they're prepared and know and not struggling when the patient's right there in front of their face because at when that happens that's when you're like oh you're okay to go and you forget to collect mm-hmm. you know something all of you do and and all of the webinars that we do with you summer you um the way that you approach training too is by asking a lot of questions like what do you see here versus like let me tell you what I did wrong and mm-hmm. I think that that's a very fine and important distinction that probably attributes to a lot of success in all of these areas and so I just want to comment on I love that you guys do that like hey what do you see here you know um, versus the hey this is what you did wrong <laughs> Well, because it's funny, isn't it? Like, aren't you naturally defensive when somebody's telling you what you did wrong? Yes, absolutely. And and especially when like, you just didn't know what you didn't know. That's even worse for me. Um, And I think to myself, like, I want the co-discovery. I want them to start being able to like critically think through a ledger. So, you know, if, if every time it's like, oh, tell me what you saw here, tell me what you do here. Mm -hmm. Then they actually, from the very get go, from day one, they start to think for themselves and we actually can create people who can critically think versus reliant on us giving the feedback. Isn't that like really the best of all worlds? It's probably, you know, one, it disarms people, but two, there's probably some sense of like self-serving that we want people to be able to have autonomy and and some sense of thinking for themselves. So thank you for that. Um, I do think they do an amazing job of really being, you know, helping other team members be cognizant of learning for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I love that. but, but yeah, so um, I, th- I feel like Debbie, maybe we have a resource too, that we'll kind of link as well okay. um, to be able to help people who are looking to train um, scheduling coordinators, especially ones with no dental experience. Um, the good news is, is it's easier now than I think it's ever been with just the amount of resources. We'll say it again. <laughs> um, really great. Academy. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> really great, um, you know, things I do think it is going to be, and I know doctors are like, well, I don't have time. And I'm like, I will say it a million times because I get it, but you don't have time not to either. Mm-hmm. So you've got to get the resources. You've got to put them together in an organized fashion. And if you don't already have the Delcys or the Debbies or the Christas or the Julies or whatever, you know, that I always hear like, oh, I wish I had that. I'm like, well, you can have that too, but it's going to take you getting really clear and intentional on creating that 30, 60, 90 day training plan. And whether it be you, or if you have somebody trusted to do it, it's setting the time and intention to just creating it so that you can, like you said, take the time to really do it well, so that in the future, it really is kind of giving you that freedom. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I love, that. I love that. But all right, anything else? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I do. I have a question for Delcy. Delcy, yes. do you have puzzles? 
Do I have puzzles? Do you like puzzles? Oh, oh. do I like puzzles? Yes, I do. I love puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> so totally kind of random, but we yeah. started asking this question in our executive assistant interviews um, because it's the same type of thing. We want people who are kind of thinking outside the box. And I feel like in this position, if you're hiring someone, you know, asking them in, in your interview process, if they like puzzles and what types of puzzles they like, I feel like the a person who likes puzzles is going to, you know, just love yeah. or, you know, thrive in a scheduling. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Every You're just, day. See, exactly. That's what it is. Your 3D puzzles, your, <laughs> she's yeah. like, my life is puzzles. It is one big puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that's a really good point is yeah. like somebody who likes puzzles, likes people, they have to like people. <laughs> you can't um, have the introverted puzzle, baby. <laughs> I know. That's like the behind the scenes. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, you have to have somebody who likes people, who has great customer service, who likes those puzzles. But the thing about Dulcie that's just awesome is she's just methodical. I mean, she's a machine. Like, she comes in and like, she sees the puzzle and she's like, I will find you. I will fill that, you know, I will figure this out. So it's kind of like a problem solver, you know, along with a puzzle person who loves goals mm -hmm. um, to get really that effective combination. That's, you know, what we're looking for. And that's she did scheduling. Have just, yeah. I did not have dental experience. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> and so much more now, now than I did before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only how we end up in this dental world. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Same with you, Ashley. Yep. Now you're the queen. Yep. So. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much. Yes, it was so great to meet you. Um, if you aren't, um, uh, I'm going to be seeing some of you, but Deb, I don't know if you're going to be there, but we have the Dental Success com Summit coming up next week. So yes. we will oh, be there. <laughs> yes. So um, I think there are still a few tickets left. So I'm going to do oh. a plug for Dental Success Summit as well. And if by chance this is playing in a Dentalpreneur podcast, mark your calendars for next year. So. Yes. Oh, of course. It's, it's always so good. So many, yes. so many good takeaways, such great connections. Um, you know, a lot of times bringing your team members, especially the really motivated influencers, mm -hmm. um, you know, gosh, it just really does kind of get them excited about the business of dentistry. So Absolutely. Absolutely. There's that rule. It's like you're the average of the top five people you spend the most time around. And I mean, this is a small example, but putting those motivated team around other motivated team, you know, just helps to, to fuel that fire. And it's, yeah. it's yeah. So. absolutely. So awesome. Well, yeah. excited to see you ladies next week and we will be right. posted on our next lady leaders um, webinar coming sometime next month. Next month. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Ash. Thank you, ladies. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Bye.